I work on the testing and the development of a set of glasses for blind people. I can hear you thinking, blind people, glasses, why, why would you give glasses to blind people if they can't see? Well, if this is what we think of as normal vision, then usually what we picture as blindness is something like this. Basically just an absence of any sight. But actually, as it turns out, about 85% of people who are registered blind have some vision left. Now, depending on eye conditions, uh, this is for instance retinitis pigmentosa, uh, you could have a little bit of central vision left, or uh, in fact you could have a little bit of peripheral vision left. This is in fact uh, age-related macular degeneration, which is going to get more and more prevalent uh, as the uh, population ages because it's an age-related disease. So these are important things to tackle, because as you can imagine, uh, sight loss really can have a devastating impact on people's lives. Uh, it is basically um, a great loss of independence, people can't recognize faces, uh, objects, people have trouble moving about independently. And basically, uh, it's very important for these people, if they've got any sight left, for them to be able to exploit that as much as possible. And that is what our project is about. <laughs> so, um, an ambitious idea. My background is in neuroscience. Uh, I'm really fascinated by the brain. It's a big, grey blob of about 80 billion cells that are connected in incredibly intricate ways and somehow give rise to our thoughts, our perceptions and our emotions. And while studying here at uh, University College Utrecht, I developed an interest in the, in the visual system. Now, the visual system really has a, a fascinating job. So what it does is it takes a pattern of incoming light that falls onto the eye, and somehow from that, it manages to actually, it does edge detection, it does object detection, um, it manages to build up, essentially, a three, an idea of the 3D environment that we find ourselves in. But what's really interesting is that actually, recent technology has become quite good at mimicking this. Um, there are techniques to do edge detection, object recognition, uh, depth perception, uh, electronically. And uh, we thought, why can't we use those, those advances in technology and what we know about the visual system to actually make the visual world easier to see for people with damaged eyes? Um, and that, that really is what lies at the foundation of this project. So, since the theme for today is connecting the dots, Let's actually put some dots up on the screen. So I've just told you that there's a lot of people with a lot of vision loss, um, but still some vision left that they're very eager to exploit. Now, on the other hand, there are a lot of in uh, intelligent image processing uh, algorithms that can actually maybe uh, make the world a lot easier to see for these people. Um, and these days, we actually all carry around quite a lot of processing power in our pockets. It's become cheaper and cheaper, and it's become smaller and smaller. And the final dot that I'd like to put up is uh, the fact that actually, while I may be working in visual rehabilitation, there is a massive industry uh, generating loads and loads of gadgets um, so, uh, for, for instance, computer games, for telecommunications, or for personal entertainment. And so what we're doing is connecting all these dots so what we're trying to do is help visually impaired people see better, making more use of their residual vision, using image processing, implemented on a portable device, using uh, and exploiting some of the technology that has been generated by uh, the entertainment industry. And because we're exploiting this technology, we can actually be quite a light project. We're a very small research team at the University of Oxford, uh, with basically just a very ambitious idea. So what do the glasses actually look like? Um, well, let me start with an early prototype. Um, some would call it elegant, but uh, maybe not. This is a set of ski goggles to which we essentially take uh, an LED display, which is basically a set of lights. And on top of it, we've put a depth camera. Now, this depth camera is essentially the camera from an Xbox Connect. Uh, so normally you use it to control video games with your body but uh, we're actually just using its output, which is uh, depth information. So this is a clever little camera that sends out a pattern of infrared light, it collects the light that bounces back, and based on that pattern and the distortions in it, it 
can work out how far away things in the environment are. And we then use the LED display to flag up, for instance, obstacles that you may be about to bump into. Um, now, while this is not a very elegant solution, as you can imagine, if, if this is bright enough, even if you've got some vision left, uh, it's going to be quite easy to avoid obstacles independently like this. And this is indeed what we found. We, we could help a, a number of people uh, navigate new spaces independently. <coughs> As you can also imagine, this is a rather crude approach, and in fact we found that this was, this was too crude for most of the people that we worked with. Uh, the model also had several other drawbacks, such as having to be physically cooled by cooking plants in the backpack. Um, so it's time to, uh, to move things a little further and improve upon it. And this is, a, this is a later version, and this has got some of the more finished components to it. So what we've got here is still the same depth camera, but we've also got a, a normal camera that collects uh, yeah, basically a regular image of the visual world. And we've got a set of see-through displays, so they've kind of evolved a little bit from the LED panel that I showed you before. Um, now these see-through displays have a quite high resolution, allowing us to present something that is a lot more like the visual image that you or I see. And moreover, because they're see-through, uh, actually we can complement rather than completely replace the visual scene, so that people don't actually lose the information. Uh, so what it actually looks like when we do that to an image, uh, we collect the image from the regular camera and we collect uh, the associated information from the depth camera, uh, getting information from uh, about how far away things are, and we use that to essentially take away the distracting background uh, and only show those things that are close by and therefore likely to be relevant to you, relevant uh, to you when you're moving about in a room. Uh, we also enhance the, the nearest parts of the visual scene using contrast enhancement, edge enhancement, uh, and enhancing features, uh, really giving people as much of an opportunity as possible to get something from their remaining vision and recognize some of the features of the things that are, they are interacting with. Um, but I'll, I'll actually let some of the footage uh, speak for itself here. So this is uh, a test in the covered market in Oxford, and you're seeing a first-person perspective of uh, a visually impaired person wearing the glasses and walking around in this market. Now, this is a very busy market, a, visual, a very busy visual scene, but as you can see, it's actually quite clear where there are open spaces for this person to move into, and it's very clear when there is a person approaching them or when they're about to bump into something. Uh, and as you'll see here, again, as people move further and further away, they fade into the darkness, uh, showing that the path is clear. But um, it's probably best if I actually ask some of our participants to uh, tell you what they thought. Uh, I can't see yeah. it. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. So, um, let's have a look. Oh, I can see your face. Your camera. Very nice to make my face. Wow, yeah. No, I good. felt rather like, you know, uh, Geordie LaForge of Star Trek or one of the X-Men or something. It was like sudden uh, extra layer of vision coming down over what I was seeing. They really are an aid. It's not seeing, as you would call it, but it's, it just enhances what and gives you that little bit of extra confidence. It takes the, a little layer of stress off. After taking them off, I was missing them. Uh, I was saying, oh, I'd have seen that. This is giving me more of a context about, uh, you know, I'm here in a corridor with a handful of people, there's other... Oh, I was wondering who those lovely ladies in the background were, but I think they're mannequins. <laughs> so at this point, we are thinking that we might be onto something, right? Um, and uh, what I'm showing you here is a, a slightly later version of the image processing. So as you may have noticed in the first one, what we were doing were, it was uh, enhancing edges. So everybody had a slightly ghost-like appearance with um, halos around them. Whereas here we've, uh, we've actually gone for the slightly cartoonized approach, which actually turns out to be a slightly more intuitive way of showing the world, as you can see here. Um, and of course, it's, uh, it's great to hear feedback from people. It's great to give people the glasses and see uh, that they're enjoying wearing them and that they uh, feel a bit like Georgia before the Star Trek. 
But um, the other very important aspect is do they actually benefit people in their everyday lives? And the first stage of that really is trying to test out in the lab what people think. So uh, what people think and actually how well they do at performing certain tasks. So what I'm showing you here is a first-person perspective of me at work <coughs> about three weeks ago. Now, it doesn't exactly look like a science lab, and I'll just describe a few of the uh, objects that I've got in the room. So we've got uh, an inflatable palm tree, we've got a, an inflatable palm chair, some party balloons, there's colourful stuff hanging from the ceiling. And, of course, uh, prominently in the middle there is Terence the t um, There's also quite a lot of equipment in the background. And while this may look like a very intense children's party, uh, in fact, it is science in progress. So, we use these items because inflatable things are generally quite friendly to you when you bump into them and kick them over. Uh, they're also extremely portable. So, what that means is you can actually take your testing environment around and deploy it uh, in different locations across the, uh, the UK. Um, and um, finally, if somebody, a visually impaired person, wears the glasses and asks you, excuse me, is that uh, an inflatable dinosaur on the floor? You're pretty sure that they're not guessing. <laughs> so, basically, what we found in these tests is that yes, we can really make a difference for quite, uh, quite a proportion of people. And uh, that's got us very enthusiastic. And you know what it is with enthusiasm? It's, it's very contagious. And so we've, we've actually been picked up by some media outlets, including the BBC, which really goes to show that uh, with a small and ambitious team, by, by finding the right dots to connect, you can actually go really far. And um, this was also noticed by uh, the people of England who voted in the Google Impact Challenge Award of uh, 2014. Because they gave us the People's Choice Award, um, and this will allow us to actually start the next and very important stage of the project. Um, what it will allow us to do is to take the glasses out of the lab and into the wild, into the lives of the people where they really are needed. Um, so essentially, what we're going to do is build, build up to a hundred prototypes, or even more, that we'll be able to give uh, out of our hands, out of the lab, uh, and into people's homes. Uh, people will be able to take them home for up to a month each, and that's going to give us invaluable feedback for um, knowing what still needs to be done, whether they are actually going to be effective uh, in helping people in their everyday lives, um, and yeah, whether, there's, whether there are any things for us to iron out before we bring them out. In this trial, we're collaborating with the Royal National Institute of Blind People, who are the leading blindness charity in the UK, and that really helps us stay in touch with the interests of blind people. Finally, uh, there's a pretty exciting step, a step of forming the spin-out company that's going to eventually have to uh, bring these glasses into the lives of people. Um, and it means that we'll need to make the glasses user-friendly, more streamlined, and frankly, a little bit more fashionable still. <laughs> so, yeah, what I hope that I've told you today is that um, actually with an ambitious idea uh, and by uh, taking some uh, technology that was originally developed for a completely different purpose, for entertainment, uh, you can actually try and make a big difference for people who may be at a disadvantage in society. Um, and as I've shown you, this can actually get you pretty far with a very small and ambitious team. So I guess my message for today is uh, if you've got an ambitious idea, something that you think might really change people's lives or change the world, then think about it and think if there are any dots, because sometimes all that you really need to do is connect them.